Thank you all for coming tonight for a very special event, and welcome to the Chemo Theater. Stuart Lyons is a producer for Breaking Bad, uh, among other things, and I've known him now for the last six years. And he came to me with this idea of giving back to the community. I'd like to read to you Mr. Lyons' biography. Over a 40-year career, Stuart worked on 31 television series, 22 pilots, and dozens of features and movie of the weeks as line producer, director, production manager, and first assistant AD. Stuart speaks frequently at colleges and universities, including UCLA, USC Graduate School, and NYU Tisch School of the Arts, AFI, University of New Mexico, and Northwestern School of Speech. It is my honor to introduce you all to Mr. Stuart Lyons. My idea for this evening is that it's going to be about you. It's not going to be about me. I'm here to answer your questions because in my work here, and frankly in my work in Los Angeles and anywhere else I've been, there are a lot of very basic questions that people just don't have the answers to as they are either considering being in this business, uh, trying to find their way into it, trying to find what, if anything, they'd like to do with it. Uh, all of those are, are valid questions. What steps did you take, especially towards the beginning of your career, to get noticed in the industry? I was in a room at NYU um, where I thought I had gone to become an actor and discovered I'd applied to the wrong school. Uh, <laughs> go figure. Uh, and they asked how many people wanted to be directors, and everybody there raised their hand except for two people. And uh, they asked the other guy what he wanted. He said he wanted to be an agent, and he became a very famous agent. And they asked me, and I said, well, I think somebody has to produce these things. And that's how I, be, I started just organizing student films. Now that, let me just segue directly into how do you get started? Because that, in essence, that's really the, the big question that many of you want to know. And it, in a way, you just have to get started. How do you get started as a producer? You make things, you organize things. There are film schools here, and there are a lot more people who think they're directors and actors and writers than, they, than people who think they're producers. Those people need help. You help them, you get a credit. You may get lunch, but you'll certainly get a credit if you help them doing it. That's the bottom line of how you get started in almost any area in this business you get started at the bottom doing whatever you can so that you develop an association with other people who are similarly driven to do this. And that's kind of how I got first noticed. I realized I did have a gift for organization. The basic thing is, if what you want to do is make movies, then what is stopping you? Is it an idea? Well, then you have to find a writer. Is it money? Well then don't come up with a really big idea. It's two people talking at breakfast. Whatever it is, you can make a movie and then the second movie can be bigger and the third movie bigger than that. And that's how you do, that's how you do it. Or you associate yourself with a student movie or a nonprofit movie or any way you can possibly do to get the credit. That's, you want experience and you want the associations. If you want to write a movie, go ahead and write a movie. Because the person who will buy that movie, if you get it to the right person, and it's good enough, and all that kind of marketing, they'll buy that script and they'll tell you to buzz off, and, but you'll get a movie made. And then the second time, you may get to stick around a little longer for more abuse. And the third time, you can really stick around because now you're a golden goose that is laying some pretty good eggs. So with all the writing that goes into your TV shows, is there any like room for improv or do people like ever just get nervous and you know, just end up making up their own stuff? Uh, excellent question and they don't make up a word. On the writing staff of Breaking Bad, the guy who had the idea was Vince Gilligan. Without going into the uh, history of Breaking Bad, he was the guy with the credibility. Vince knows that 
this input goes into this script and this input has to go into this script and unless that line is, is perfectly realized, then this script won't make sense or this character's arc won't make sense or his character, this character's attitude won't make sense. What was one of your favorite lines delivered on set or while filming the Breaking Bad series? Uh, that, that one's easy um, because uh, Jesse and Walt have gone for their first cook and uh, Jesse's climbed up on the rock and he's looking around to see if there's anybody there and Walt says, anybody there? And he says, no, there's just all those cows in that cow house. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I could never write a line as brilliant as somebody stupid enough that they forgot the word barn. <laughs> I just never, I went over to Vince and I was like, how'd you, how'd you get there? Well, I just, no. there's something about incredible talent that just makes you want to kill, especially if you don't have it. To pitch a miniseries pilot, what who would be the best person to contact in a studio or network? What type of information should be in the marketing packet? There are no hard and fast rules. Uh, everything I tell you, if you work hard enough, you will find an exception to prove me wrong. Everything I will tell you tonight, there will be an exception to what I will say. Please don't waste your time coming up with TV series or miniseries. Don't do it. If what you would like to do is write television, let me give you the odds on better way to do it. Pick a TV show you like that you think is going to stay on the air for at least three or four years. Write an episode of that. Then put it in your drawer, take it out in a couple of weeks, rewrite it, then find somebody, and there are some excellent programs at UNM, CNM, who will critique it, a teacher, not a friend. Don't send it to a studio. Then repeat that process, and by the time you get to the third or fourth spec script, you will know whether or not you have some talent in this. Then, at that point, you have to make the decision to move to Los Angeles, get on a TV staff, and work your way up through the writing way. And after you've been on a TV staff for two or three years, and you've written five or six episodes that have been on the air, at that point, take out that movie, the, the uh, miniseries idea that you had, which may or may not have been good, and now you have the credibility to go to sell it, and you will know how that process works. Going back to showrunners, so are they out of a job too? Like, what are they doing? How are they finding their next story to tell? And I've had conversations with people in the business about developing TV shows, and I've heard over and over again, get a good showrunner, find a good showrunner. Well, how mm -hmm. the hell do you do that? Well, you don't if it's your idea. Okay. Because if they're a showrunner, they've got their ideas. So you don't. Okay? Don't, don't, don't bang your head against that door. It won't open. I don't go to Vince with my ideas. I'm sure he'd, he'd do a wonderful job, and I'd be very appreciative, but that's not gonna happen. He's got his, his things, as do all the other showrunners. And on the, on the occasion that I've had a good relationship and have gone to the showrunners with the idea, it's almost like they're invested in turning it down. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've gone to showrunners uh, on other shows and then watched the same show get made two years later, and I was like, it's not gonna happen, so don't. You gave us a really useful breakdown on um, the path that a writer might take to move from here sure. to LA, and would you give us a similar breakdown for a new actor, please? Well, I think you've got a great opportunity here. You've got about five or six movies and TV shows happening. They are under a tremendous incentive to hire local talent. And so now the question is, how do you get noticed? And work creates work. So get on a stage somewhere. Get, do you, have you figured out who the casting people are? There are only about three or four of them, and they love finding new people who will deliver. 
I believe anybody can study acting and become a better actor. Whether you can become a good actor or a great actor by studying, I, I don't think so. I think you, you have it and you can become better at it. But you're never gonna go from terrible to wonderful. So if people tell you, you suck, <laughs> and there are people who love and trust, you know, that you trust their opinion, maybe listen to them before you spend uh, a, a lifetime of, of, um, of frustration. Where does funding for pilots or independent features come from? TV funding is very simple. You present an idea, assuming that you have the credibility that I've talked about, and they fund it. <laughs> now, if you want to raise money for an independent movie, ah, that's hard. You can get incredibly creative. Look what Kickstarter has done. Look what... Um, uh, look what that did for, for which, with the TV show, that uh, Veronica Mars. What was your best mistake? What taught you the most? What mistake taught you the most? What mistake taught me the most? Did you make any mistakes? Oh, I've made, oh, I always make mistakes. The, the, thing is not, the thing is not to avoid making mistakes. The thing is, is can you correct the mistakes you make? You're going to make mistakes. I make thousands of decisions a week, I'm going to make a mistake. The question is, does the camera keep rolling? Do we keep making the movie? Can I correct any problem that I've had? Uh, those are, those are uh, really important things. What skills from outside the industry are most apt to transfer to the industry for folks that are considering a career change? Masochism. <laughs> I think you need to be high energy. I think you, uh, there's, this is not a place for people who just want to do what they're told and get by. It just isn't going to work. Uh, it's not a business for people who are tardy. Uh, there's nobody who's late and there's nobody who's lazy in movies that I'm aware of. It just isn't. I, I really do believe that finding Becoming the solution to somebody else's problem really is the key to keep moving forward in, in this business. Uh, be it the studio's problem of finding a great project or being, uh, uh, when I was an assistant director, which I did for 25 years, being the person that could really focus that director's energies in the correct way in the show in the correct way for that director. If what you're trying to do is give people the confidence that you can handle something that you've never handled and you're going to bring on somebody who has in fact handled it before so that basically they'll say he'll do the special sauce but the nuts and bolts we can always go to that guy that's called adding an element and what you try and do in features and in television is add enough elements to make the production inevitable that's your goal that's your goal as a producer, that's your goal as a creative person. If you are a writer and you write a movie and you just want to hand in the script, okay, maybe the script will carry it. If you're a writer and you hand it over to a really hot director, now the studio will be likely to be more interested. And when Johnny Depp signs on because of that hot director, you now have a package of elements. And now it's beginning to look more and more inevitable. Again just because, here's the way I, I, I view it, and I do say this to the, to sometimes to the PAs. You think you have a problem. Your problem is getting your movie made. You actually don't have a problem. The problem is the person above you has a problem. You have to be the solution. That's the way to approach this business big time. If you don't take away anything else than tonight, other than you don't have the problem, you must be somebody else's solution, then, then I've given you like the major thing I've figured out. I mean, think of it as a cake. You know, you just want to make the cake? Okay. Now you want to put icing? Now it's better. Now you put the candles on and sprinkles? You got something that somebody will sing to. <laughs> hey, that's nice. 
That was pretty good, huh? Yeah. Right on the Did fly. Did you just make that up? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, from the bottom of my heart, I, I want to thank you, sure. um, Stuart, for being here tonight. Thank you. Sorry.